While I would argue that the RAV4 Hybrid is the most pragmatic new car you can buy, it's short on authentic personality. The woodland trim fails to fix that, yet it does exactly what it needs to. For 2024, Toyota slapped the woodland trim with an activity mount, otherwise known as a one and one quarter inch receiver. They also added army green as an option, which I love to see. To keep you fresh, I'll share all details and pricing for the 2024, though my tester is at 23. A black roof, black door handles, and mirror caps are now standard as well, giving the other colors a two-tone look. The one lurking next to me is in midnight black, which Toyota says that should make for sleek and mysterious style. While I think Santa Claus in a wetsuit would be more sleek and mysterious, I am a fan of the Woodlands Swagger. While it's not really a convincing off-road SUV, you do have some very mild all-terrain tires with exclusive bronze wheels, standard crossbars, mud flaps, blacked out badges, Woodland all-weather mats, a darkened exhaust, and the only mechanical change is an off-road tuned suspension. For 2024, they've also added the availability of an all-weather package, which really should have been offered last year as it includes rain sensing windshield wipers and heated front seats and leather wrapped wheel. Even if you skip that package, the Woodland is not cheap. So I'm glad that it at least comes with some key features like LED projector headlamps, LED fog lights, along with Toyota's smart proximity key. Though there's no availability of a power rear gate because this is a Woodland brother, use them soft arms. Sorry. Every RAV4 interior has rugged touches, so Toyota didn't feel the need to add anything to the woodland outside of those floor mats. In fact, it feels identical to the base LE. Without the new upgrade package, you'll just have a vinyl wrapped wheel and shifter. The interior is comprised of many dark plastics with at least some silver accenting to break things up. The quality of the materials themselves are just not that impressive, though the panel fitment and sturdiness is what I would expect at this $36,000 price tag. I also like that for this rugged themed vehicle, we have plenty of matte finishes, so it should be a little bit easier to clean. And then we also have some grippy door handles and climate controls with dials that have more rubber than the tires on a Mitsubishi Mirage. There's no capacitive buttons. We have a chunky shifter and the infotainment system retains a volume knob and a super stripped down user interface that really matches the person of the RAV4. The resolution and response time are also adequate, and while I've found the user setup to be a little frustrating, it does come with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We also have a 7-inch multifunction display that's well integrated into the gauge cluster and can display a wide variety of info. Your creature comforts will be short. Again, you will have that available weather package, dual zone automatic climate control is standard, and I'm super happy to report that Toyota gives you lumbar adjustment on the woodland, something you don't get on the LE. The seats themselves are just okay. I think they can accommodate a wide variety of body types, but the center console here is wide, so my knee is really resting here on this hard touch plastic, and the thigh support is a little short. If you're looking for the most comfortable outdoorsy vehicle, I'd probably point you towards something like an Outback. I would have liked to see the easier to clean soft tech seats on this kind of rugged trim, but I do think that outdoorsy people will be happy to see the amount of storage you have in here. You have a big center console, center cubby, cup holders that can sort of accommodate a 40 ounce hydro flask and a dashboard shelf that could definitely use some grippy material. You will also get a six speaker sound system with the Woodland, which has adequate bass, but turn it up too loud and then you can tell it loses some of that clarity, but so long as your expectations are realistic, you should be fine with this. And just like any other RAV4, the back seat can easily accommodate lanky or needy offspring with great legroom, headroom, and rear console vents with USB ports. Your cargo area is a complete box. It's wide, it's tall, it's long. You have a 120 volt car outlet back there and a compact rear spare tire. I do wish that the seats could fold down a little bit more flat, but you still could sleep back here as it's like six foot three in length. On the road, the Woodland is an ever so slightly less sensible hybrid RAV4. And to the surprise of no one, the changes they made here are insignificant. So under the hood, we're gonna have a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four paired up with two 
electric drive motors. One motor helps out the engine up front, the other one serves alone at the rear. There's no drive shaft connecting it to the transmission and it only kicks in when deemed necessary. Power is rooted through Toyota's eCVT. It uses another electric motor to help change the gear ratios and then it also uses a planetary gear set which means that as you're accelerating, it doesn't feel as unnatural as a traditional CVT that uses chains and pulleys. And the Woodland, unlike the upper trim hybrids, uses a nickel metal hydride battery. Toyota typically attributes this older type of battery to better cold weather performance, and it's something that's been fairly proven. Expect it to last anywhere from 12 to 15 years, depending on where and how you drive. While it definitely has more grunt in the lower range, with 219 total system horsepower, passing power is good. And dare I say, it feels spirited at city speeds. But what about the numbers? Despite hot and humid conditions, this managed a 0 to 60 of 7.2 seconds. The Woodland does make two slight compromises. One, the gas mileage, while strong, is a little less ridiculous than the regular hybrid RAV4. It's also a hair more noisy. Pulling up to highway speed, 65 miles per hour, wind noise is prevalent, though far from offensive. You will also be interrupted quite a bit from that engine, which, as you would predict, sounds a bit like lawn equipment. The tires make themselves known, though these mild all-terrain tires are kind of crucial for this as an activity vehicle because it's about the only thing that's going to make this better off-road than your regular RAV4 hybrid. This does have a trail mode, which will use the brakes to help shift power side to side to get you over obstacles. Other RAV4 hybrids will also have that. There's no difference in gearing. The rear motor has a peak output of 53 horsepower, which is enough to certainly help you out. But from what I've seen with other RAV4 hybrids, its ability to power through and over obstacles is a limitation. The extra traction from the wild peaks should make a difference, though you could technically buy your own set of all-terrain tires for any RAV4 hybrid. This is not something that you're buying as an off-road enthusiast to take off-road. It's just to get you to the places to have fun at. Again, activity vehicle. And to get to your camping spots or trailheads, you're often driving on unpaved forest service roads. So they put in the off-road tuned suspension, which in theory is supposed to make this a little bit more comfortable over bad roads. So let's see what it can do with Indiana's finest. While this is still technically paved, it's a good test of our suspension. I feel most of these small to medium sized imperfections, and there are vehicles that are maybe more smooth in the segment, but it does a good job at making sure that nothing really breaks through the cabin. It may not be the most supple, but it's very forgiving as it rolls over everything here with ease. So if you live in an area with appalling roads, I think the Woodland would serve as a great companion and around corners if you've driven than any other RAV4s, the Woodland is going to feel very similar. It feels well under control despite the suspension itself being, well, soft. The steering is light in its normal and eco modes. Put it into sport, it firms up a little bit. Still, it's completely numb. It doesn't really build up super well as you go through corners. At least it's more substantial feeling than something like the Corolla Cross. And if woodland owners are regularly driving in mountainous areas, like Toyota's PR team would have us believe, it doesn't feel light on its feet, but at least it's sure of itself. Like most small SUVs, the RAV4 is a pretty easy car to drive. You have big windows, a windshield that's close up. You can actually see your hood. It makes it feel a little bit more truckish than some others. Plus this has standard blind spot monitoring along with Toyota Safety Sense 2.0. Five. It's not the most up-to-date system that they have, but it works pretty well and comes standard with lane centering, adaptive cruise, autonomous braking, and road sign assist. It's not best in class when it comes to crash tests, but it performs strong there too. And if you're considering a RAV4, you probably also value reliability. The 2.5 liter has direct and port fuel injection, which helps keep the intake valves clean. As I mentioned earlier, the hybrid battery does have a lifespan, so consider that for the long, long term. The most common common issue with the 2.5 is a failing coolant bypass valve. RAV4s also struggle with door drains trapping water, infotainment bugs, and select owners complain about electrical issues. The scariest issue for the hybrid was an expensive wiring harness that was susceptible to corrosion, especially in northern environments. Toyota implemented a simple fix for this. Reports of fuel tanks not filling completely have also dropped off. When you consider how many of these Toyota sells a year, this easy 
easily earns its legacy for longevity. If we're looking at this from a value aspect, yeah, it's based on the LE trim, but it comes with Toyota Smart Key and lumbar adjustment. Then there's the numerous changes to the exterior, the tires, and that small trailer hitch, which is great for bike or luggage racks. When we're comparing it to other RAV4 hybrid trims, I do think that this is well packaged and well priced. It's just the RAV4 hybrid in general is an expensive car these days. And honestly, if you're looking for a ride to truly take you anywhere, basically all of the Subaru Wilderness models have higher limits than this, but this is probably all you're gonna need, and then you will also get 38 miles to the gallon. It's easy to mock the woodland for not having the off-road prowess to back up the aesthetic, but if you move past the surface, it makes a ton of sense. It's not for people that deliberately tackle trails. It's a basic, cheap-to-run SUV with some helpful, light modifications to benefit people with an active lifestyle. I think this is a great configuration, and I'd appreciate it more if it was easier to find one for MSRP. That said, if you need a rugged-ish, versatile SUV with great great gas mileage, and good power, the RAV4 Woodland is an easy car for me to recommend. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then leave a like to help me do a number on the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for more fun, detailed car content without fluff. Check out my Patreon for an additional podcast, and I'll catch you in the next one.